Hello everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to the webinar. We'll begin in a few minutes, just waiting for a few more folks to join. So give us a couple of minutes and we'll get started. All right, great guys. Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar on digital media for HR professionals, how digital media is transforming the HR space. My name is Rohit Tutamchandani. I'm a digital consultant and a lead trainer at Digital Vidya. I'm going to be taking you through this webinar today. Before we get started, quick introduction to our associate partners for this webinar. So we have Keka, which is a HR management software. So they have payroll and talent management systems as part of their software, so do check them out. Uh, we also have Software Suggest. Software Suggest is a website that helps businesses find softwares for all their business needs, including HR. So if you're looking for a specific HR software, maybe payroll or for talent management, for performance, and you don't know which one to go for, you can try Software Suggest and find the best softwares. Right? So. With that, let's move on to see what we are going to be talking about in this webinar. We'll first look at an orientation to digital media and how it is transforming HR. We will then see how you can use digital media for talent acquisition and employer branding. We look at the use of digital media in performance and feedback systems. How you can leverage digital in the learning and development space and how artificial intelligence or AI is transforming HR and recruiting. So we move through these topics one by one. I'll cover this in the next hour and 10 minutes, and then we'll take questions towards the end. So I'm sure you guys will have questions as we progress. What I request you to do is keep them noted, and towards the end in the last 15, 20 minutes, you can drop it in the question box that you see on your webinar panel, and then we we'll take those questions one by one, answer as many as we can towards the end. Right, so for now, we'll get started. But before we do a quick introduction to Digital Vidya, so Digital Vidya is powering this webinar. For those of you who are not familiar with Digital Vidya, so we are a global leader in digital marketing, big data, and analytics trainings. We've trained about 27,000 participants in nearly 2,000 workshops we've conducted across 55 countries. Our training partners are Google, so we are partnered with Google and we do a lot of their partner trainings for their agencies. We are also partnered with LinkedIn for a content marketing course that we offer. We are partnered with Facebook as well and we also train Facebook's agency partners. And we have a six month digital marketing program which is certified by vSkills, a government of India initiative. Some of the key companies we've trained 
are these. So we've conducted workshops for most of the large corporates across the country and around the world. So if you have any training requirements in the digital space, do feel free to reach out to the team. Let's move on to what we are here for and how digital media is transforming the HR space. To begin with, let me show you this slide. So this gives you an idea of how digital media has been growing in India. This is India's digital population. So you can see there are about 460 million internet users in India. And this number is growing rapidly. In fact, India is probably the only country where you still have a billion people who are not using the internet, right? We have a population of nearly 1.4 billion and about 460 million on the internet. That's 1 billion users still to experience what the internet is. So the base is massive, the growth rate is massive, and the potential is massive as well. In an environment like this, where digital is growing, there are two key trends that seem to be driving the use of digital in the HR space. The first one are changes in the overall tech landscape. So digital has transformed the entire tech landscape. And we've seen, or we are seeing the growth of apps that are always on. We are also seeing a flood of data. There is so much data available across all functions inside an organization that can be used very effectively and leveraged to make better decisions. And in the HR space, show better results from HR efforts. We also see a lot of real-time communication. So this is something that a lot of employees and people in organizations expect today. So they want communication to be real time. We've also been seeing the increasing use of artificial intelligence. And this is something that's a key trend in the digital space, something that we we'll talk about in a fair bit of detail towards the end of this webinar. So the last section is on how artificial intelligence is actually transforming the HR industry. The second trend is changes in the way we work itself. So due to the growth of digital, we've seen a lot of growth in remote working and work from homes. Right? We've also seen a lot more demands on employee time, which has actually led to a lot of productivity challenges. In a scenario like this, there's been a growth of digital and cloud-based tools and strategies that have improved efficiencies across HR functions. And this is across three key HR functions that we'll cover today. So we talk about how digital is transforming the talent acquisition space, the learning and development space, and also performance management. So before we go further, you'll see a quick poll on your screen and these polls are anonymous. So what I want you to do is to tell me which of these functions, so you'll see a poll on your screen now, which you can answer. So which of these functions are a core part of your role currently? So you guys can answer it and I'll, I'll share the results with you as well. So I'll tell you out of all of us here in the webinar, which function forms a core part of most of our roles. All right, some of you are yet to vote. I see about 65, 70% of us have voted, the rest of you once you vote, then I will share the results with everyone else. I'm going to close the poll in the next five seconds. So you've got five more seconds to tell us which of these is part of your core role. Great, awesome. I think most of you voted now. I'm just going to close the poll. And so the results that I have, which I'm going to share with you so you can see the results now on your screen. So 44% of us have talent acquisition as a core part of our role. 80% are from the L&D space. That's massive. And 52% of us have performance management as a core part of our role as well. Right. So okay, that's fairly evenly distributed with a large skew towards learning and development. So let's begin. Let's move on. I'll keep having polls like these as we keep moving so you guys can interact through these polls. And we'll also get a lot of insight into this whole bunch. We are a large bunch of people here from different companies, big and small, in the HR space. Right, so let's begin with the first section. 
let's first look at how do you use digital media for talent acquisition and employer branding in order to build a strong employer brand through digital media you need what you call an integrated digital approach right so you need to be leveraging multiple digital platforms and channels to ensure that you have those long term and sustainable results so when we say integrated digital talent acquisition what we mean is a bunch of these so it starts with what you call content marketing and search engine optimization basically creating content that employees potential employees would find valuable and then amplifying it to get it in front of them leveraging social media effectively both to build an employer brand as well as to recruit talent using email campaigns building very effective team pages and career pages on your websites these are critical because these are pages that your potential employees are going to look at and we look at overall employer branding through all of these as well right so let's begin with the first block here which is attracting talent through content marketing so for those of you who are not familiar with what content marketing is content marketing is basically the process of attracting your target audience to you which in your case when you're doing talent acquisition you're trying to acquire talent you're trying to get employees or prospective employees to want to work at your organization and hire the right talent so how do you do this you do this through the creation and distribution of content that adds value to them when i say content that adds value i'll give you a couple of examples and like i said some of you might have questions so please keep them noted we'll have sufficient time for questions at the end of the section so we'll have the last 20 minutes or so completely devoted to answering questions that you have and even probably having an open discussion on certain topics so when we say content marketing for talent acquisition what we mean is creating content that your prospective employees would be searching for for example if you know that your prospective employees would be looking for something specific you would create content and share it with them across social platforms on your website you would also showcase employee experiences testimonials right nothing is more powerful than seeing your potential colleagues colleagues raving about why your organization is a great place to work you also create content around work culture life in the organization so talk about fun team activities why it is so much fun to be working in your organization you need to showcase that so that people would want to come and work at your company so a part of your company's blog strategy should always be focused on attracting talent and i'll show you a couple of examples for those of you who are wondering what this means so you could create content around let's say career advice tips for how do they develop professionally right? depending on the kind of talent you want to hire you could create content that they would read and they would engage with and that's how they get to know about your company as well right you could even showcase employee experiences like the one you see here so this is from a from an american company called boomerang so they've got a great team page here where they talk about the fun they have as a team how they travel right basically what what is life in the organization like is it fun is it boring that needs to come across through these pages and posts that you do right you could showcase everyday life you could even showcase if you have a great office like google does then that's a great talking point i'm sure a lot of you have seen that video on google's office going viral right so everyone in fact google is a company that almost everyone out there is waiting to work for i see so many people asking me how do i get a job at google because that's the kind of employer brand they've built right they've talked so much about the culture they have about the kind of facilities they have about what life is like about the kind of growth you have the employer brand is so strong that people really want to go and work there and that's the kind of brand you should be building through this content that you're creating right this is another example from this company this is a company called buffer right so you could also effectively leverage content about your organization so let's say your organization has been featured in a survey or featured in the news or like in this case like this example i'm showing you here 
So this is Bank Bazaar, which was featured as the 10 startups you should be working at in 2016. So they took this coverage about them and actually shared it on their social media profiles. So when you have coverage like this about you, when you see that you've been covered, it's always good to amplify it, to tell people that, hey, we've been featured here and we are a great place to work, right? All this helps you in building that brand as an employer and acquiring the right talent as well. This is another example. This is from Deloitte. So if you look at Deloitte, again, they've built a great employer brand too. And if you look at their website, you'll see they have a great employee magazine. It's called the Deloitte Life Magazine, which talks about all about life at Deloitte, the kind of growth you have, the kind of uh, opportunities you would get once you join the company. All this, they've actually invested a lot of money into building platforms like these because these actually help you in acquiring the right talent over the long term. Also building the right employer brand over the long term. Right, so creating content is not a one-time activity, right? It is something that you would do consistently. You can also leverage your current employee's expertise to create content. For example, let's say you're a company that has very, very technical content, which your potential or prospective employees would want to read. Now it's not easy for everyone to write technical content. What you could do is you could probably leverage your current employee's expertise, request some of your team members to write those blogs, write those content pieces, credit them for it. They'd be happy as well to have their blog featured on the company blog. Company benefits as well because now they have great content to use to attract future talent as well. So wherever you can have this as part of your strategy, get your current team members to create content for you, right? Like I said, be consistent. So always create content that appeals to prospective employees, irrespective of whether you're hiring or not, right? This way, when you actually need to hire, you're already on that prospective employees list, right? They already kind of want to work at your organization. And when you want to hire, hiring becomes much easier because the employer brand is actually so strong. You could also build brand awareness amongst potential hires through all the content that we just talked about. So the, like I said, the more aware they are of your brand, the more likely they will join your organization in future, right? So the bottom line here is ensure content creation is part of your overall organizational strategy and be consistent at it. When it comes to social media, social media is a great place to interact with prospective employees and to build a strong employer brand. So you can do it in multiple ways. This is an example of a video from Starbucks where they've showcased the experiences that their interns had. So if you're an intern at Starbucks, what kind of an experience Starbucks gives you? So they had a whole bunch of their interns talking about how wonderful their Starbucks internship experience was. And this is how you, again, attract the right talent because when people see other people talking about the great experience they have, they want to have the same experience as well. Which brings me to the, another point, which is always use video testimonials, right? People trust video testimonials more than they trust images or just text, right? It's very easy to fudge a text testimonial, but it's not so easy to fudge a video and which is why videos are much, much more trusted when it comes to testimonials of employees. So these are examples from different brands that you'd see. So this is an example from Unilever where they posted to their Facebook page talking about, again, sharing employee experiences, and they say, come and live these experiences, play in our world, clear objective of improving their employer branding. This is another example from PNG. So you can see PNG employees explaining why they're joining PNG and why it's the best place to work, right? So that's, again, all these are different ways of brands building a strong, presence for themselves as employers. This is another example from Marico where they've shared their employees talking about life at the company. Right? All these are examples of different companies that have used social media effectively to build a strong employer brand. You can also enhance your brand through engaging videos and quizzes. So you can do videos like these where PNG talking about gender equality, standing for a cause, again, connecting with the audience, lots of examples from PNG carriers. They do a great job 
on their uh, corporate on their employer branding front right they also do fun quizzes on leadership fun puzzles like you see here all these are intended to interact and engage future job prospects right future talent who could probably join the organization somewhere down the line you could also create blogs around the hiring process right this is again something that's a great strategy to use and you'll see a lot of companies doing it this is because it also shows that the company is transparent that this organization is very clear about what their hiring process is right they're open to sharing it with everyone around saying okay if you want to join us this is our process this is what you will go through and this is how you can end of the day get hired right so that's using social media to talk about your hiring process you can also promote your csr initiatives through facebook and linkedin posts so whenever your company does anything on a social front that's something that should be amplified as well uh, a lot of people care for causes and a lot of especially if you're hiring younger generations millennial generations they are very very clear about causes they care for be it things like caring for the environment or gender equality or say no to plastics when a company takes a stand right they they find themselves being in sync with the company's thought process and the chance of them working at the company is much much higher right so when we do any csr activities ensure that you are using your social media platforms to showcase them effectively you can also arrange events workshops for your employees for your team members and promote that on social media to showcase how employer friendly your work culture is right so these are all examples of different brands that have done it and things you could do as well apart from leveraging social media for building a brand which is what we've seen in different ways and we've seen lots of examples as well you could also leverage targeted social advertising right there's some there's something i'm sure you guys are doing very well on linkedin in fact i'm sure most of you are currently using linkedin for talent acquisition i'm sure you guys are probably using the linkedin premium version as well to find the right talent so i'm not going to go into linkedin in detail because i'm pretty sure most of you are using it what i'm going to instead go into is how you can actually use facebook ads to reach the right candidates right i'm not sure how many of you have done this but whenever i speak to most hr folks they use a lot of linkedin but they don't use too much of facebook but facebook actually is a great place to engage talent as well and also get the right candidates so if you've seen facebook ads targeting and those of you who've not seen it you'll be amazed at what facebook can do for you so i'm just going to show you how facebook ads can help you reach the right candidates so on facebook when you look at advertising you can target people by their education level right so you can let's say you want to target people who've done a graduate degree or a post graduate degree you can do that right you can even target people who've been to specific colleges so if i want to only recruit talent from the iims i can say okay i only want to reach people who have studied in the iims right so you can be as targeted as that you can choose specific colleges or a specific bunch of colleges let's say you want the top 20 b schools you can put in the top 20 b schools and recruit talent only from the top 20 b schools right you can also target employees of specific companies so you can also target people based on where they are working so let's say you want to target people working in a specific bunch of companies you can do that too on facebook so it's a great way to target and reach the right segment of employees you can also target candidates by specific by industries and job titles so if you want to target let's say candidates from the software industry you can do that from let's say finance you can do that you can also target by specific job titles so if you want to only hire software developers or if you got an open position for software engineers you can then target people who have indicated on facebook that they are actually working in this space right so facebook ads is a great way to reach audiences uh, i know that a lot of you stick to a lot of linkedin but facebook is something if you not explored yet should probably explore as well another key part of facebook advertising is using facebook's custom audience feature 
right? So Facebook has something called a custom audience feature, which a lot of brands use for their brand marketing. But even in the HR space, you can use this really well. And this is something I've used for some of my clients in the employer branding space to actually engage prospective employees and relevant people who are visiting their career pages. So how does this work? For those of you who are not familiar with custom audiences, Facebook allows you to upload email databases to Facebook. Facebook then matches the emails you uploaded with Facebook users. So let's say I have a database of potential candidates, let's say 1000 email IDs or 1000 mobile numbers. I can upload those 1000 mobile numbers to Facebook. Facebook will match those 1000 mobile numbers with the mobile numbers of people logged into Facebook and find them on Facebook for me. It's a very powerful way to reach people when you only have emails and emails might not reach them all the time. You can reach them on Facebook as well. And not just that, you can even track people who visited specific pages on your website. For example, let's say that you want to reach people who visited your careers page. Right, so all the people who visited your careers page in the last one month, you can reach only them. So Facebook tracks all the people who visited your careers page and you can reach them on Facebook. Right, it's something that brands do, which I'm sure you guys have experienced but may not know the technical word for it. So you've probably gone shopping on, on an e-commerce site and later you've seen the same ad following you all over the place. Right, I'm sure most of you have experienced it. Gone to buy a product or you're going to book flights on Make My Trip and later you've seen the same flight following you on the internet. That's something called retargeting or remarketing in the digital space. And you can do that in the talent acquisition space too, where you can retarget or remarket to all the people who visited your careers and jobs pages, right? So anyone who's visited your jobs page in the last, or careers page in the last 30 days, you could re-engage them, retarget them with specific job openings, Right, lots of things that could be done to engage the audience and also attract the right talent. Right, so Facebook ads is a great, powerful, very, very powerful tool if you've not experimented with it yet. It's something I strongly recommend you do. Apart from social advertising, you can also use emailers. So emails are a great way to reach out to your audience for hiring. You can also check how many opened, how many clicked, right? You should also optimize your team and career pages. If you want to bring us build a strong employer brand, optimizing team and career pages is extremely important, right? So you will improve the look and feel of your team and career pages to make it more attractive. Right? These are pages that your potential employees are going to visit. So it needs to be something that stands out, something that's awesome. So you, what I want you guys to do is probably after the webinar, go and take a look at your own organizations, career pages, see how good it is, look at, see if, if the, is the look and feel great, right? Does it look good on a mobile device? Open the page on a mobile phone and see, does it look good? Does it load fast, right? Is the design attractive? Is what you're trying to say strong enough to attract the right talent? So after the webinar, go ahead and audit your career pages and see how you can improve it to make it more attractive to potential job seekers. Right, this is another example. This is from IBM. It all very, very creatively done career pages. You'll find so many of these online when you look at a lot of the big companies that have done a great job at employer branding. You'll see they've put in a lot of effort into building great career pages. Right, this is from PepsiCo. You can see their career page where they've showcased videos of a lot of their team members. Right, like I said, videos have a much, much stronger impact because you can actually see a person who's an employer of the company speaking, sharing his or her experiences. Right, and like I said, the more faces you show, the better it is. Right? It gives a very human side to your company. A lot of companies do not showcase a lot of their employees on their team career pages, but wherever you can, it's always good to showcase, right? Most of your team, and if you're a smaller organization, right, it's always good to showcase all of them for small organizations, startups, it's a good practice if you want to attract talent. If any of you here are working at startups, then and if you want to attract talent to a small startup, which is like, let's say just about a hundred member team, right? It, it makes sense. You lose nothing in, in showcasing all the hundred, right? What do you lose? 
it's not costing you any additional money to showcase 50 more people on a page might take a little effort but trust me the effort is worth it right it can also be creative so this is an example from red bull so sometimes a lot of you might say well we don't have an office like google right we don't have all those pretty pictures and and fancy offices to show in that case you can do something like what red bull has done where they have a very creative page and they have a very nice note when you scroll below it says well we don't have pictures and videos of smiling employees enjoying free lunches and bean bags in colorfully painted offices instead you'd rather judge us by the quality and professionalism of what we produce across our many products and projects and it's a great way of saying hey we don't have fancy offices like you'd see a lot of companies showing you but we've got a lot more that you have here we've got great growth we can offer you we are we build great products that you can be a part of right so see what is it that you can use to attract talent it doesn't just have to be fancy offices right it can be so many other things it's about it's left to you to figure out what makes your organization different and how you can put that across on your career pages right great guys so just to summarize the key takeaways for talent acquisition and employer branding i'm sure you guys have probably made notes as well but this is just a key summary of all that we've covered in the last 25 30 minutes talking about digital and the talent acquisition and employer branding space the first one is ensure you're creating content with the objective of talent acquisition use this on your blog ensure that you're amplifying this content to reach the right audience and use social media to promote great content engage employees as well so ensure you're leveraging your social channels and platforms well leverage targeted social advertising to source the right candidates so like i said i'm sure you guys are using linkedin a lot but if you've not experimented with facebook and particularly facebook's custom audience feature right that's something you guys should probably do use your email campaigns effectively and when i say effectively i mean track data see are they reaching people if you sent an email to 1000 prospects did it reach out 1000 of them did it reach only 200 how many of them opened how many took action all this will help you improve always remember digital is data driven so when you talk about digital transformation it's all about using that data effectively also like we just saw towards the end optimize your team pages optimize your career pages as well right so ensure you optimize your team and career pages make it attractive make it something that would want would, would make people want to work at your organization right so that's a summary of all the key things we talked about we'll now move on to our next section like i said i'm sure some of you might have some questions don't worry once we're done with all three sections we'll take it towards the end so we'll now move on to leveraging digital in performance and feedback systems now about 50 percent of you said 55 percent of you said you have performance management as a core part of your role so before we move further into this i'm going to do or run another poll here right so what i want you to do is to use this poll and tell me in your organization currently how frequently do you guys get structured feedback uh, or give structured feedback to employees on their performance right so i'm just going to run this poll so you guys can let me know and i'll share the results with all of you as well don't worry these polls are anonymous so i don't know who said what so if you you can be free and share and tell us what you currently do so here you go i've just launched the poll so you guys can tell us what you currently do in your organizations so how frequently do you give employees feedback on performance right on their daily work okay uh, i've got about 60 percent of you have voted i've got about 40 percent of you are still left so i'm going to give you another 10 seconds to let us know how you do this and then i will close the poll and share the results with all of you great guys i'm going to close the poll in the next couple of seconds awesome done so let me share the results with you so you see the results on your screen now so about 36 percent of you say you do it annually 
20% say half yearly, 20% say quarterly. So uh, about that's 76% of you say you do it quarterly, half yearly, annually. 18% of you say you do it monthly, fortnightly, and just about 5% say real time. So that's excellent. Uh, let's move on and see why I took this poll and why I asked you that question. So if you look at the trend in the HR space today and the trend with a lot of employees, especially millennial employees, the trend is moving from annual half yearly and quarterly appraisals to real time feedback, right? Most new age organizations, if you see, have scrapped all their annual half yearly and quarterly appraisals and moved to much, much more frequent appraisal systems and more real time feedback. This is because in the digital age where things move so fast and things change so fast, right? Technology is evolving at a rapid pace. Nobody wants to wait one year for them to get to know what they did right and what they did wrong, right? Nobody does. And if you look at millennials, they don't even want to wait three months. They want to know immediately if you, they say if, you, if I did something that's not up to the mark, something I could improve, tell me today so I can improve it tomorrow. I don't have to wait for three months to get a list of things that I could have done better three months ago. Right, so when you talk about real time feedback, that's something that a lot of new age organizations have moved and I see a couple of you or 5% of you have said that you guys are already doing it real time and that's excellent. 18, 20% of you are doing it monthly, fortnightly, that's excellent as well. Right, but for the rest of you, especially if you want to move quicker and transform your organization, it's always important to move to real time feedback. How does this work? So there are different ways to do this. If you're saying, okay, well, how do we do it practically? We've got a massive organization. We have uh, hundreds of thousands of people, right? And how do we ensure that everyone's getting feedback in real time? Well, it is a bit of a challenge, I agree, which is why you probably don't have to be real time, real time, but probably even weekly or fortnightly. And there are great tools to help you out. One tool that I have tried personally and I've used and found very effective is this tool called 15.5, right? It's 1.5 F-I-V-E which is a continuous performance management tool. So you can go to their site later on, check it out. It's called 15.5.com. So what they do is, right, they look at your objectives and key results. They have weekly check-ins. So when you say 15.5, what it means is every week, an employee spends 15 minutes answering specific questions on their objectives, their result areas. Right? They talk about, okay, this is something I did well, this is something I could have done better. It's like a 15 minute self-assessment. And then the manager spends five minutes reviewing the assessment, having a quick catch up with them and telling them, okay, all this is good. There's something you could improve. Right? So you have these weekly check-ins where you get a good pulse of how, how what, what your team's morale is like, how good their performance is. The team benefits as well because you're, you're coaching employees in real time. Right? Teams know that the organization is focused on their growth, on ensuring that they grow because they're getting virtually real-time feedback. So like I said, you might not be able to do this like every day or every hour, but weekly or even fortnightly check-ins are great. Right? So if you could do it weekly or fortnightly using tools like these, or you could even build your own in-house tools, that's a great way to progress. Right? But always remember that the trend is moving because most employees today do not want to wait three months or one year is probably something that no one wants to wait one year to know what they could have corrected one year ago, right? So that's something that you should probably move away from. Another tool that helps in this case is a tool called Emprise. It's not something I've personally used. Like I said, I've used 15.5 so I can vouch for it. Uh, Emprise is not something I've used, but it's something that I've heard is good as well. So you guys might want to check this out if you're looking for tools that will help you improve your overall performance management. Just like performance management, so in every phase or every part of the feedback cycle, you have different tools available. So you have tools available for pulse surveys, you have tools available for exit interviews, for overall employee satisfaction, right? So there are a lot of these available, which you guys can probably check out after this, the webinar is over. We might not be able to cover all these tools uh, in a one and a half hour webinar. So that's something you guys might want to check out as well. For now, we'll move on to our third topic of the day, our third area, 
right, which is learning and development. And like I said, the next one is artificial intelligence, which is very, very interesting on how AI is transforming HR at a rapid pace. So about 82% of you said in the earlier poll that learning and development forms a key part of your everyday role. So let's look at how digital is impacting the learning and development space. So when it comes to learning, technology is transforming the entire space in a big way. In fact, the learning technology market is beginning to explode, right? You've got platforms in every stage, right? From uh, learning experience to delivering it to assessment, right? Building great LMSs. So you have a whole list of tools here, which you guys can probably check out one by one uh, after the webinar is done. You guys will get this uh, deck as well. So we'll probably email the deck to all of you who attended and you guys can use it to actually refer to later and see what tools you could probably explore. The key thing in the L&D space is to have a great LMS. I'm sure almost all of you have a great or have a digital LMS, right? But the LMS does a great job only when it covers all of these benefits. So it helps you measure progress and productivity. So if you have an LMS that just runs learning programs without measuring progress and productivity accurately, then your LMS is probably not good enough and you might need an upgrade. It should also allow for collaborative experiences, right? Since various departments across the organization supply learning content, the LMS should be something that you can easily collaborate on. It should also reduce your overall L&D costs and time. Quickly and conveniently expand your e-learning courses. So if you have an e-learning course that you want to update, expand, the LMS should allow you the functionality to do this, right? You would also use your LMS to form custom learning paths. So let's say for different teams or different seniority levels, you could actually build a learning path. You can say, okay, for, for senior managers in marketing, this is your learning path. You have these 10 courses to do in this path and you could define that path for them and they can actually go and follow that path. So you could have these defined customized learning paths for every function and for every level in the organization. So the LMS should allow you this functionality as well. It should also allow you to create tests and surveys with automated grading. So when somebody takes a learning program or a learning session, they should be able to have themselves evaluated with a test or survey that comes in automatically after they've gone through the entire session. Right, so these are benefits of having a great LMS. So if you have an LMS that does not give you all this functionality at the moment, then you might want to upgrade to a better one or you could even use some great software like this one, which is an LMS that has most of the features that I just talked to you about, in fact, a lot more. So there are lots of these LMS softwares out there that you can actually explore and check and see if you need an upgrade, which one you should go for. Another key trend in the L&D space is the rise of gamification, right? To make learning more fun. So most of these learning sessions have moved from being just one way learning to using what you call gamification, make it more interactive, right? So you have multiple softwares there where it converts the entire learning flow into a game where you have points for every level, every section you complete, you, you unlock, let's say a new level, you also get points. And if you finish after a certain time, so let's say you, you finish five courses the quickest, you get some additional perks. So it kind of makes the system more fun where you, it's, it's also incentivized and it's also more fun to go about learning. Right, so that's one key trend to keep in mind. Another key trend that is taking over the L&D space is virtual reality. Right? So virtual reality helps people learn by doing because we know that learning by doing works best. And this is without actually doing. So they're actually in a virtual environment where they can learn by working on a project they would be working on in reality. So this is an example here. I'm just going to play this for you. 
So you can see this video playing here, where you have this restaurant and you have the front end manager checking and finding what's wrong, what are the errors, what could have been done better. So you can actually walk in and as if you're actually walking through a restaurant as, as the front end manager and looking at what's not in place and what's in place. So it's a great way to train by transporting you to the actual environment without you actually being there. So this is a trend where you have a lot of uh, training software providers actually creating sessions in virtual reality format. And with the VR format, with the research conducted by Massey Center in 2017, they said that learning rotation rates can be as high as 75% versus just 10% for reading or for a lecture. Right? So because you're so involved, because you're so immersed in learning, retention rates are actually much, much higher. In fact, if you look at how VR improves the training experience, there are a whole bunch of advantages. Right? It, to start with, increases safety without sacrificing on-the-job training. This is particularly important for sectors where you can't really train someone on site because it's not safe. So in cases like these, let's say you're training someone for a job where they're, let's say, a miner, you can't send them to a mine to train them inside the mine. You probably have to train them outside. And what helps you here is using virtual reality to train them without sacrificing on the job training, right? Uh, it helps you boost productivity like we saw because it is so immersive. The overall output of the training is much better. Improves retention as well because you're actually learning by doing. Retention is much higher. It brings an enhanced level of realism to training scenarios. It fe you feel like you're actually training in a real life scenario rather than training inside a classroom. Improves satisfaction scores. So if you have to look at satisfaction scores at the end of the training, virtual reality helps improve satisfaction scores. Reduces your training costs as well, right? Because you're helping improve retention of topics, helping drive higher satisfaction, uh, improving the ROI from your training. So your overall returns that you get are much higher. And with VR, you can make training available anytime. People can actually, instead of waiting for a classroom training to happen, they can just go into a VR training module and get trained whenever they want, right? So this is a key trend to keep in mind. A lot of companies have already started using virtual reality training experiences inside their organizations. In fact, if you look at UPS, which is one of the world's largest uh, courier and shipping services, they've actually built uh, or are actually building virtual reality tech to train their drivers. So instead of having them uh, getting trained on the road, they actually get them trained through virtual reality simulators. Right. The other thing in the L&D space when it talks about going digital is training is digitizing your training and workshop feedback. So at this point, again, I'm going to have a quick poll for you guys. So after, I'm sure you guys, since a lot of you are in the L&D space, about over 80% of you, I'm sure you guys conduct trainings in-house. So once you have a training done in-house, so you've just, let's say you have a training program today and the training program has just got over. How do you currently collect feedback on these programs, right? So I'm going to launch a quick poll now. So you'll see a poll on your screen. So how do you currently collect feedback on training programs in your organization? What do you currently do? So you have three options there. So you can tell me what you currently do. Okay, I think about 50, 60% of you have already voted, 55% I see, 70% now. So those of you have not voted yet, I'm going to keep the poll on for the next 10 seconds for everyone else to vote. Okay, I've got about 80% at the moment, 20% of you are still left. Great guys, so I'm going to Close the poll in the next couple of seconds and share the results with you. Great, awesome. So I've closed it and you will see the results on your screen now. So 53% of you have said you collected on paper after the training is done. 
Uh, 30% say you send a link by email where people can click on the link and then fill in up. And then about 16% have said that you collect it digitally after the session is over, right? So what I've seen uh, at, a lot, at a lot of organizations and uh, I do a lot of workshops for a lot of corporates across the country, I've seen that almost everyone after a workshop is over, you have someone from the HR team coming with a bunch of papers. So you'll have about 25, 30 sheets of paper passed around. The feedback is collected on that paper. Then all this is taken. That HR person, the team member then goes back, converts all that feedback into digital form. We'll put it into an Excel sheet, collate it all and then share it. Right? All this is a lot of work and not really the most efficient process because one, you're losing time, right? Second thing is it's actually work that could be done, could be directly digitized. Why would you do it on paper and then uh, get it done manually or get it collated or moved into digital form manually? So what we do, for example, so whenever, so we do a lot of, like I said, we are a training company and we do a lot of corporate trainings and workshops for corporates across the country and across the globe as well. What we do is as soon as the workshop is over, we circulate a quick short link. So it's a short link which makes it easy for people to type on their mobiles right then and there. So they type it down immediately after the workshop is over. And we use forms like these. So we use either a tool called SurveyMonkey or we use simple Google Forms to collect feedback on how the training has gone. In fact, you'll see one simple poll like this at the end of the webinar as well, where we'll collect feedback from you in digital form. And then after this is done, the fill rates are extremely high because people are filling it right then and there. It's also when people are fresh from the workshop and they tend to remember a lot or they, a lot of their experience about was their experience good, was their experience bad. And then this is automatically digitized and we get reports like this instantly. So the next instant, it is filled, we see reports like this. So there's no manual data entry required. We get analytics like this, which tells us the quality of the content, right? All clearly presented in graphical form, right? Tells us the effectiveness of the trader, of the trainer, right? How effective was the trainer? We also get a quick immediate NPS calculation, right? A net promoter score, would you recommend us? Would you not recommend us? All this happens. So let's say I've circulated the link now within 10 minutes, you get all these results, right? It, it doesn't require anyone to go and manually take those sheets of paper and enter that onto a system, right? Likewise, we even get qualitative data. So we actually have people who have actually typed in qualitative data, which is automatically digitized as well, right? And all these tools allow you to export to Excel. So if you want to export to Excel, you can export to Excel and share also, right? So where you, you would be spending so much of time actually manually entering data from paper into a digital form. There's something that actually helps you. And I see about half of you are already not doing it on paper and that's great because apart from the fact that it's not efficient, it's also not very environmentally friendly. So you can do your little bit for the environment there too by going digital here. So these are tools that you could use. You could even do it differently. So SurveyMonkey and Google Forms are what we use and it works excellently. I've shown you the results as well here on the kind of data you can get. I'll leave it to you to pick which ones you find better. And like I said, share it immediately. Not sometimes when you share a link by email, most people are already too drowned in email to actually click and fill, click on the link and fill it up. Right? So, but when you give it immediately after the workshop, like about 16% of you do, it tends to work much better. Right? All right. So that's the LND space. Let's summarize the key learnings in the LND space. So the first one is, like I said, ensure you have a feature rich digital LMS, right? Start leveraging virtual reality for training, digitize workshop feedback collection, and explore different experience assessment, develop and deliver, development and delivery tools and platforms that I shared with you in an earlier slide. And you could actually go and check out all those platforms that could make your overall LND experience awesome. Right, so let's move on to the last section for today, which is probably the most exciting and the most interesting, which is how is artificial intelligence increasing efficiencies in the HR space? So for those of you not familiar with AI, 
AI or artificial intelligence is a science of developing computer hardware or computer software that mimics human intelligence and performs human intelligence functions. So basically what it does is you build a software that does what a human being would otherwise do. I'm sure a lot of you have seen uh, the launch that Google did recently at their I.O. where they launched their artificial intelligence. I'm sure a lot of you saw that video which was going viral on social media platforms, right? Of Google's assistant uh, having a conversation and actually booking an appointment with uh, a hair salon and also booking a table at a restaurant for their uh, for people who are using it. So in the HR space, one of the key things that have been driving the use of AI is chatbots, right? So we have bots that chat with you. Chatbots have been growing at a rapid pace. In fact, this is how they've been growing. The market was about 190 million in 2016 expected to grow about six to seven times to about $1,250 million. That's $1.25 billion in 2023. So how are these chatbots impacting HR and what are they doing? One thing or one area where chatbots are doing a lot of work or transforming HR, so to say, is in the recruitment and career planning space. I'm not sure how many of you are using chatbots uh, currently, but they're a great way to make your process more efficient. So I'm going to show you a demo of a few AI driven bots here in the HR space. So the first one that you see is this site called Wade and Wendy.ai. You'll see the link at the bottom of the slide here. This particular site has two bots. One is called Wade and the other is called Wendy. So Wade is your career, plan career planning assistant. So let's say I want to get a better job. And I want to climb up the, or the corporate ladder or I want, I'm looking for another job. I could just go this site and get Wade to do it for me. So I'm just, just watch the screen. Now you'll see how Wade does it. So you see this, so Wade gets in touch. He says, hi, Alex, is it a good time to chat about a potential opportunity? Alex says, yes. So Wade is the assistant here. He says, great, we, we meant, you mentioned that you're looking for a data size role focused on generating natural language for conversation. Can you tell me more about the recurrent neural network technique? So basically he's asking him, tell me more about what exactly you're looking for. And the, this guy gives the details saying, okay, well, this is all I was looking for. And this guy, the, the AI automatically finds a relevant opportunity and says, well, why don't you look at this? And if you look at this here, it says it's not too far from home, right? Just like you asked. So the AI not only takes into account what you want or what kind of a role you're looking for, it also takes into account the fact that this person has told the AI that I want to find, I want you to find me a job that's not very far from my house. So the AI has actually pulled up job listings within a certain radius of the person's house, shortlisted based on his expertise, and then shared it with him. Right, and then this guy says, okay, I think this, this role is good. The AI then says, okay, let me connect you with the team and I will keep you posted on their feedback. Right, so you have an AI doing all this for you and you can focus on doing your other important tasks. Right? This is from the career planning perspective. This is from a employee perspective. If you look at it from a recruiter perspective, so now let's now look at it from your perspective. Let's see if you are a recruiter and you guys, most of you are recruiters. If you were to use it as a recruiter, you would use the bot called Wendy and let's see how Wendy works. So let me show you this. So this is Wendy, right? So you're using Wendy to help you source candidates instead of doing it yourself. So Wendy says, I noticed you published a new data scientist job opening. Can you expand more on the requirement? So you go back and say, well, this is what I was looking for. And then Wendy asks more questions saying, okay, give me more details on this. And then you answer those questions again. And then Wendy goes ahead and sources candidates for you, right? So a lot of time in the recruitment space for people who are in recruitment goes into sourcing candidates, going through CVs, right? Finding the right candidates. Here you have the AI doing it for you, right? There are lots of tools like these that are actually simplifying the recruitment process, making it 
much more easier, uh, making it much less manual. And there are a lot of benefits here, right? There are a lot of tools that automate the screening and also the scheduling and the recruitment process. It saves 75% of your team's time. Right, because research says that 75% of the team of that of time when it comes to a recruiter goes to sourcing the right candidates, screening them, and then scheduling interviews. Those of you who are in the recruitment space and do a lot of recruiting will trust me on this. It takes a lot of time, right? Where you actually go through CVs, find the right one, schedule interviews, go back and forth for scheduling times. You have today you have bots and AIs that do all of this for you. In fact, the one that you see on the screen, though it's called Maya or MYA. This is another bot that does all this process for you on its own. Right? And, and not to mention that apart from saving your team's time, it also removes biases, right? That come up when, when we are recruiting manually, right? When we are manually recruiting, we all have biases which are subconscious and built in us. I'm sure all of you understand biases much more than I do, right? So you have a bias towards a candidate because of a certain thing. Here it, it completely eliminates biases because it picks candidates objectively depending on the information it has, screens them objectively, and then also schedules the interview for you. Right, so this is how it's used in the recruitment space. You could also use artificial intelligence or AI bots for FAQs on company policies. It's all, this also saves a lot of time and it's something that's that we're seeing moving a lot in the HR space. Especially when you have a large company, lots of employees, and you have a lot of questions coming to you saying, okay, what is this policy? What is that policy? And you have to keep answering the same thing. Here you have a bot that does it for you, right? And lets you focus on more strategic tasks. So this is an example of a bot. It's called Tela. It does exactly that. It gives every employee access to information they need 24-7. So they don't have to wait or email someone from the HR team. Whenever they want any information on company policies, they can just ping the bot. So they ask the bot, okay, hey, what's our vacation policy? And the bot automatically picks out the vacation policy from the entire company policy database and pulls it out. Right? It sometimes even customizes it for you wherever it can. So if you have something which is which you can code into the bot saying personalize this for a specific employee, you could even personalize it. Right, so if an employee from a marketing team is asking for a certain uh, role specific policy, you can do that. Right, so all this is something that is transforming the HR space. You have a lot of tools like these that are making it much easier to engage with employees, reducing times, reducing turnaround times. So here the employee gets the answer instantly instead of having to wait for an HR team member to respond or to actually walk up to an HR team member the next day and ask. And if you want to do this maybe late at night from home, you want to plan your vacation, you're sitting at home at night, and you want to quickly check, hey, what's my vacation policy? You can quickly check with a bot and go ahead with planning your vacation, right? All right. The last one in the AI space, which is a tool I wanted to show you, is this tool which helps you scheduling executive meetings. And another excellent tool, I'm just going to show you how this works to give you an idea of how AI is actually transforming the space. So when you have executives who want to schedule meetings, it obviously takes up some amount of their time and most executives are busy, have a lot of things to do rather than just attend schedule meetings. So an example is this. So you have Greg mailing, right? Mary mailing Greg saying, hi Greg, it was nice meeting you at a conference yesterday. Do you have a little time for coffee to continue your conversation? I can swing by somewhere close to your office. Right? So this is a mail that Greg receives. Greg is a senior executive, does not have too much time to actually set up meetings. Greg then replies to her with his artificial intelligence assistant, Amy, in copy, saying, sure, maybe. And Amy, can you find 30 minutes for coffee at my office? Right, so now Amy, which is the artificial intelligence bot, takes over and mails Mary saying, happy to get something on Greg's calendar. Does Tuesday work or alternatively does this time work? Right, and then says this is Greg's office. Mary then replies saying, mornings are not so good. 
I can do four o'clock in the evening. And Amy then responds to Mary saying, thanks for letting me know. I will send out an invite. And then the invite gets sent out by the AI assistant, right? So all this is being automated. There is so much of automation happening, right? From scheduling meetings to simplifying the recruitment process, right? Saving time for the team, ensuring you're focused on more people specific and people oriented tasks rather than probably sourcing and screening, or even like I said, spending time on answering questions which are already available in the company policy and a bot can easily pull out, right? Great guys, so with that, we've covered all the four areas we said we will. So just to recap, we started with how digital is transforming HR. We then moved on to look at digital transformation in the talent acquisition space. How do you build a strong employer brand on digital? We talked about L&D. And we also talked about performance management systems and finished the last section with how AI is transforming HR at a massive pace. Now, before we move on to questions, I'll take, I'm sure a lot of you have questions. We'll take all your questions one by one. You guys can start dropping your questions uh, in the chat box. I already have uh, a bunch of questions to get started with. Uh, before I get to the questions, I have a quick poll to run for you guys again. So here you go. I have a quick poll to run. And once you guys finish with this poll, I will then start answering questions one by one. So you guys can quick poll for you guys. So would you be interested in organizing corporate training in digital media or analytics for your company? So you can let us know if you're interested at the moment or if you want to do it sometime in future or not at the moment whatever you have, so you could let us know and then we'll start taking questions one by one. So I'm, I've got about, I think 60% of you answered the poll. I'm gonna give you another 10 seconds before I start answering questions. All right, great, guys. I'm going to close the poll now. So we've got your answers. Thank you so much for that. Uh, great, guys. I'm going to start questions one by one. You guys can feel free to drop your questions in that question box there. I'll start taking them one by one. I've got a few to start with. Okay, I think some of you had issues with the poll earlier. I hope that got sorted. Uh, some of you had issues with the poll. Okay. Uh, so Bradley has asked a question saying, uh, SAP success factors versus inbuilt HR systems. Okay, so I'm assuming your question was uh, inbuilt HR systems versus uh, software, which one is going to work best? So in this case, it actually, I'd say the answer is it depends. It depends on what kind of an organization you are, depends on the size of your organization, depends on your current level of HR processes, Lots of factors go in there. Uh, so it's not something I can answer off the cuff without actually looking at your individual case. So this is a, there's no one size fits all solution. All these solutions are uh, something that are answered basis your current scenario. So it's like a prescription given basis where you currently stand in your organization. I hope that clarifies. Oh, I have another question from Vijalakshmi. She says, uh, I have a question, will the chatbots be useful in recruitment job career pages? Like when someone uploads a profile, it would be a recruiter who reaches out. Uh, you, I, okay, I, I'm assuming that you're saying that you have a chatbot on your career page and when somebody uploads a profile, uh, you can have the recruit, you can have the chatbot taking over from there. Yes, you can, right? So you can, you can have the chatbot there where they can actually have a conversation, understand what kind of a role they're looking for, and then source and screen candidates, uh, basis that. Uh, you could use these in different places as well. That's just one of the places you could use. And you could even have uh, chatbots promoted through social media. 
So Facebook Messenger has a lot of chatbots that you could use where you could get uh, potential recruits to actually engage with you through a Facebook Messenger chatbot. Lots of options, lots of different ways you could uh, use chatbots in your organization. I right, hope that answered Viz Lakshmi. If not, uh, you could drop a question again. Uh, okay, there's another question saying, will it be roundabout? Sorry, hang on. Uh, to reach the person again after the bot's conversation? Uh, not, not really. So the bot, short, the bot will tell the person that, okay, uh, you've been shortlisted and this is your interview date and you could drop in for the interview one. So the bot will let you know that I have scheduled an interview with this candidate at 3 p.m. and send a calendar invite to all concerned. So that way you don't really have to talk to the person at all because they will directly come for the interview. If you're using a bot only to screen and not to schedule interviews, the bot will tell you I have screened these 25 candidates. This is the list. These are their profiles. You can go ahead and schedule interviews for them as per the convenience of the interviewing team. Right, so you could do it either way, depending on which bot you are using, whether you're using a bot only for sourcing or only for screening or sourcing, screening and scheduling altogether. Okay, uh, I got a question from Kamaya saying, how do you start CSR activity for digitalization if company doesn't have it? Okay, if your company is not doing CSR, then well, uh, there's not much you can do there. If you have a CSR cell that is doing CSR, then uh, that that's something you can leverage. But if you're not doing your CSR, uh, maybe what you could do is look at uh, how you could maybe take a stand and stand for a cause. But if you don't have a CSR cell, then that's not something that's not something you would probably use. Right? It's for companies that are already doing a lot of CSR activity but not showcasing it at the moment on social platforms. Yeah. All right, uh, uh, Chirdeep has a question saying, are you based out of, uh, well, I'm based out of uh, Chennai Chirdeep, but Digital Vidya is based out of Delhi. Uh, and we have trainers across the country as well. So you could reach out to us uh, in case you have any specific training requirements. Ramani has a question saying, are there any trainings on the same module where we are learning more of these topics in depth? Yes, we do. Yes, of course we do. Uh, you could get in touch with our team, uh, Ramani and, uh, you could speak to them on getting these trainings organized in-house for you. We'd be happy to do that. Bhaskar says, I'm looking for bringing AI into training. How do I make it possible? Where should I start? Uh, Bhaskar, when you say AI into training, uh, what do you mean? Do you mean, uh, I'm not sure which part of training. Do you mean using AI as part of your L&D system? A lot of L&D systems today have AI, by the way. Uh, so you have a lot of L&D systems where you have artificial intelligence incorporated into it, which automatically tags content and groups content together. So instead of you having to manually tag and group content in a specific category, the AI system already does it. So there are so many ways you could use AI in training. I'm not sure uh, when you asked which part you were referring to. If you want to rephrase that for me, uh, I can take that question. All right, uh, there, are some, look, there are about, I think, seven, eight more questions to go. Uh, while the questions are being answered, I have another quick poll for you guys. Like I said, uh, we have a quick feedback. So I'm going to continue answering questions. But while I answer the questions, if you guys could uh, fill in that feedback for us, I'm going to continue answering the questions. But in the meantime, uh, if you could fill in that feedback, that would really, really help. Uh, thanks in advance for it. So while you guys fill in that poll, I'm going to continue answering questions. Uh, so. Okay, I've got a question. The next question is from Abhishek says, Abhishek says, how can we take benefit of AI in designing uh, micro learnings? Okay, uh, when you say micro learnings and you say take benefit of AI in designing micro learnings, again, it depends, right? It depends on what kind of uh, learning environment you want to build. So let's say that you want to build a learning module uh, for a certain topic or let's say you want to design a learning module for uh, a specific role where a candidate gets automatic feedback at regular intervals on their on what they're learning and applying right? So you could use AI there where you could build an AI module where candidates learn and then they constantly apply their learnings you have an AI which is constantly measuring their application and giving them feedback in real time right so that's one way which you can do that okay uh, that's sorry that was a question from 
hang on guys lots of questions coming in so i'm just uh scrolling up to find them okay i've got another question from uh Moshmi. Moshmi says in the training feedback section what's the difference between sending the link and digital okay all right good question Moshmi says what's the difference between sending the link and taking it at the moment so like i said when you take the feedback at the moment so like i said we for workshops that we conduct uh, we normally take it right then and there so i give a link in short and people actually open it on their mobile phones and fill it right there so because it is being collected immediately right then and there in digital form people tend to remember their experiences more and give better sub, uh, qualitative feedback than they would maybe two days later that's one second thing is when they are sitting there they're kind of everyone's filling so because everyone's filling they also fill it's like the crowd is filling so let me also fill when you send an email individually people already have enough emails on their in their inbox to act on most of the times the, the fill rate reduces when you send an email uh, and ask them to fill it up at their convenience maybe 50 percent would fill up when you forget it filled up right then and there about 80 to 90 percent fill up now i've seen this myself out of personal experience we always get 80 to 90 percent of people filling it up right then and there when it's asked for right so hope you got the difference Moshmi, between sending a link via email and uh, getting it filled then and there right all right uh Shirdeep has a question saying, to come to the business end of the webinar, what are you offering? Corporate training software or consultancy and charges thereof? Uh, sorry, I'm not sure. I got it. Okay, oh, you mean what are you offering? Okay, okay. if you're saying what is digital with your offering, well, we are a digital training company. So like I said, we offer trainings in, in anything across the digital media space, right? From digital marketing to analytics to, uh, like I said, everything digital that you can think of. Uh, is what we offer. So you can get in touch with our uh, team for more information on any trainings that you want to do in house, Chirdeep. Okay. Uh, Puja says recruitment more in depth training on digital and AI. Okay. If that's something you're looking for, Puja, you can uh, get in touch with our team and they'd be happy to organize it for, uh, for you and for your team in your organization as well. Bhakti has a question saying, which training will help all the employees in general? Means I'm not looking for by department, but looking for a training where employees can have idea about the industry. Oh, well, Bhakti, all our trainings are customized. So we do have different levels of trainings. Uh, in fact, we speak to teams, understand every team's uh, requirement and then make custom training modules for each. So we all our training modules are customized for every organization and every function. So if you want something that's across the organization, we can find out, speak to your team and uh, give you the right uh, training outline that would fit your team. So what I request you to do, uh, Bhakti, is to get in touch uh, with us. So in fact, by the way, uh, that's the details. You can email us at uh, corporate.com or just call that number that you see on the screen and the team will be happy to guide you on uh, how we can help you upskill your organization in the digital space. Okay, uh, I'm gonna move on to the next question. So. We've got 10 more minutes, guys. So those of you who have questions, please feel free to uh, drop it in the chat box and we'll take it now. So I've got another question saying from Kamaya again saying, is it possible for getting detailed training on performance management? Uh, you can, that's not something we do. So like I said, we are a digital training company, not an HR training company. So we do trainings in the digital space and maybe digital for HR, yes, but uh, performance management, no, that's not something we do. So you might want to get in touch with someone who who does uh, trainings in performance management. Like I said, we do trainings in digital media and digital analytics, basically the digital ecosystem. Okay, I've got a question from Paris saying, uh, would HR digitization become the cause for un unemployment for many? Uh, well, not really, uh, Paris. So Paris has a very relevant concern. He's like, you talk so much about AI chatbots and everything becoming automated will that mean that uh, there will be unemployment because a lot of people in the hr space will lose their jobs well honestly not really because ai is only assisting you ai as of today ai is what you call an assistant right it's assisting you and helping you do more meaningful work right it's just that your work will evolve it's not that you will not have a job so yesterday when you were sitting in probably uh, taking feedback from a paper and putting it onto an Excel sheet. 
tomorrow you'll use that time to do something more meaningful and more impactful rather than doing a, a data entry job so the assistant will help you with the data entry job and you will do something that is more more uh, a higher value add to the organization so to say right so no it's no it's not that uh, it's you're going to lose your job or anyone in the hr space is going to lose their job it's just that you will do your your work will evolve to become more impactful and you will have assistance to help you in making your work easier okay uh, there's a question from kamara again does ai define key performance area and performance management uh not at the moment no kamara at least not as far as i know uh bhaskar says we train youth on core employability skills trainers competency is an issue can ai help us replace trainers competencies at least at some level uh bhaskar that's difficult we don't have uh, ai is still comparatively early days uh, we don't have ai that can replace a human trainer completely might not be able to at least not in the near year or two maybe as the pace of technology grows you might have an ai who can replace trainers and ensure you have uh, consistency of training across uh, all functions in fact today you have me taking this webinar two years later you might have an ai taking this webinar that's possible at the moment you don't right at the moment you don't okay uh, how can we implement ai in the banking sector says debujit uh, okay that's if you're saying in the banking and finance sector uh that's not something that uh we can talk about that's a different topic altogether we can probably figure out another uh webinar for it because right now we're talking about ai in the hr space in the banking sector is a little off topic and we might have to do another webinar before we come to that question so i'll i'll keep that question on hold for now right okay uh chirdi has a question do you want to take a digital training or on site training oh we do on site trainings as well in fact all our corporate trainings are done in in corporate offices with the teams there so all our trainings that we do for corporates we do both we have digital and on site you guys can pick uh, which ones you want right so that's something you guys can do okay devo ji says i am an hr in the banking sector so i asked all right awesome so in that case uh what you can do is uh since you are nature in the banking sector rc hr uh, end of the day is still your your internal process are going to be pretty similar i am not sure if your processes for hr are different in the banking sector i am assuming your lnd would be pretty much similar your performance management would be pretty much similar to most other organizations in which case you can use the tools that i showed you uh, to have this done right all right uh, great guys i think i have covered all the questions that you guys had are there any more questions from those of you who are still around here Are there any more questions from those of you who are still around here? There are about, I think, quite a few of you are still around. Any more questions? If not, uh, we can close the webinar. And if that's fine. All right, great guys. So awesome, great interacting with you. Great uh, interacting with all of you over the last hour and a half. And thank you so much for being part of the webinar. wish you guys all the best in your digital transformation efforts in your organization and i look forward to staying connected with you guys do reach out to us if you have any training requirements we'd be happy to help you out thank you so much